Hey what's up everybody, thank you for checking this video. If you want to see more, please leave a like and subscribe. But even if you don't, enjoy and happy coding! From a developer that hates plugins, here's a plugin that doesn't suck. Elementor is a live page builder for WordPress. It's amazing, it's open source, faster than the competition, easy to use, it doesn't require any coding for anyone to just build a beautiful page. I think I'm gonna say it, yes, I'm gonna say it. It's the best page builder for WordPress. I said it. It's totally free for you to use it, download it and install it on all the websites that you want and if you really really like it you should consider buying the pro version that it's not expensive at all and it comes with a tons of new features. Click the link in the description below the video to learn more. Welcome to another tutorial. In the last episode we generated a super quick PHP form that it's really standard, really simple and we embedded it, we required into our shortcode and at the same time we required and echo an inline script for our form.js, so for the JavaScript in order to handle the form. Before continuing, before actually building the form.js and doing the form submission with vanilla JavaScript and then handling the form with an Ajax request in the backend, I want to improve upon this approach a little bit because what I'm doing right now I'm requesting the form.js from the source folder but if you remember our initial structure in the source folder are all the raw stuff that are not compressed and minified and the actual in queues should come from the assets folder where the source code is fully minified and compressed so it doesn't wait as much as the raw version and I'm doing the same thing for the my style CSS but these two script I'm just for my administration area so I I should create, I should extend a little bit the goal file in order to deal with multiple JavaScript, multiple CSS files. Because also I want to echo a style. Because if I access the front end here, my form is not properly styled. All these messages that I'm like printing here, those should be hidden. I should have a different color, for example, if it's an error, it's red. If it's a success, it's green and stuff like that. But in order to do that, I need to write some CSS. And I don't really want to write plain CSS because I'm using SAS, which makes my life easier. So. What I'm gonna do today and what we're gonna do in this tutorial, we're gonna create another SCSS file here and then we're gonna update the goal file.js in order to deal with multiple SCSS and multiple JavaScript files and store everything compiled and minified in the assets folder. So let's do it. First, let's create another file in the SCSS folder in our source folder and the new file is gonna be called simply form.scss and then I'm gonna update my testimonial controller in the method that prints the results of the shortcode I'm gonna echo the style above the required ones of the contact form always load the style before the contact form let's change this to actual link and then this is the href but as I was saying I don't want to tap these files from the source folder because those are the unminified non-compressed files I want to change these to the assets folder and in this case the form is gonna be form CSS and here it's form.js it's fine of course if I access the front end and if I refresh and open the console I'm gonna have a bunch of errors because the form JS is not there as well as the form CSS. So now let's take care of updating the goal file.js in order to handle different files, the my script JS, my style SCSS, and the form SCSS and form.js in different ways. Let's open the goal file.js. Let's close the file view and let's scroll to the location where we're defining the style and the style is going to be really really easy to do it because Gulp has the ability by default in terms of searching the source files to specify multiple source files if the piping allows it and in our case for the styles the piping allows it and we're really lucky because gulp is searching for a specific file and then based on that file uh, uses the piping to do all the things that we defined in previous lesson here we have the ability to specify multiple files by passing an array which is really really convenient so we can scroll all the way back up where we are defining the style source variable and we can uh, duplicate this and say style uh, front something really generic and let's tap the source scss form.scss something like that 
And then we can copy this variable that we just defined and here in the gulp.src source, instead of passing one single variable, we can wrap this around square brackets and pass two variables or two file locations separated by a comma. That means that this gulp source will loop twice based on the number of files. So if we save it, and we visualize again the file three, we go back to the assets, we just have the mystyle.css. But if we open our terminal and in the location of our plugin, we tap gulp styles, that is the unique task command of that specific section, the styles will be compiled and look what happened automatically in our assets folder, we're gonna also have the form CSS and the form CSS dot map. So the source map of that specific file. Fantastic, now the form CSS can be embedded from the assets folder. We need to do the same for the JS task, but unfortunately the JS task, it's kind of more finicky because we're using Browserify and we're bundling stuff in order to compile ES6 and uh, sort of like translate all those extra more advanced methods in vanilla JavaScript. We cannot just simply pass multiple entries as an array here, but we need to loop through the entries and then return that specific entries and change also the name. So it's kind of like a little bit more complicated, but let me show you what to do. Let's scroll back up where we are defining our JavaScript source and our JavaScript URL, and we need to split the JavaScript source because first the JavaScript source should be just one. So it comes from the source forward slash JS. This is the location of the folder. Then we can define a variable called JS, probably admin, but you can define this variable as you want. You can decide the name. And the JavaScript admin should only have the name of the admin file, the name of that file that we want to enqueue in the admin section. And then we can generate another variable called JS front, maybe. So it's the JavaScript that it's in the front end. So just to keep it a little bit consistent and we can call it form.js because we generated that file form.js. Now we need to define another variable that is actually an array of files. So we can specify JS files and here we can open and close the brackets and specify the JS admin and then JS front. So basically we're gonna have these variable that collects the array of all the files. And if you need to add more files, if you wanna split other things and enqueue specific files in specific section, you can do it by just specifying another variable that taps another file and add that variable inside this very own array. Now that we have our array of files, we can use it to loop through the JavaScript task as many times as many files we have. And instead of doing just one simple return, we should wrap these all return and all the piping of this return inside a loop based on the amount of files. So we can simply do it in JavaScript by say, based on the array JS files, map through all the entries of that array and the map method of JavaScript automatically loops through all the entries. It's really straightforward. We don't have to specify anything and we can return the unique entry it's like a regular PHP for each loop. So for each files that we have in the JS file array, return the actual entry, or you could call it file, but entry makes more sense, just the entry of the map array. Inside this loop, we can move this full return with all the piping inside it. And of course, indent it properly, so it makes more sense visually, there you go. Let's hide the sidebar for now. Now you can see we're mapping through the JS files and we have an entry every time we map. So because we have two files, the first one is gonna be JS front, the second is gonna be the JS admin. Here we need to change just a couple of things. The browserify, we are specifying the entries that right now JS source is just the folder location. So it's just JS, it's just source forward slash JS. We need to concatenate whatever entry we're looping it. So it's gonna be the full URL of our specific file. Plus we need to pipe the source with the actual entry and not manually write the name of the file. Well, there you go.
there you have it. Let's open again the file view. And in the assets, for now, we just have the myscript.js. But if we open back our terminal and we tap the JS task of gulp and we trigger that, boom, there you go. Now we have our form.js that by default is just a really simple file here. We have an add event listener with a document, with a console log. But because of all the shenanigans that we're doing, the gulp file, the bundling, the piping, the minifying, and so on, we're going to have a form.js minified version that doesn't occupy it as much as the non-minified version. And if we go back in our front end now and we refresh, we open the console, we don't have any more the console log error because the JavaScript file is properly loaded and we have the console response, this is ready for our JavaScript method, which is fantastic. And this is way better than actually loading that unique file because the form.js now is just 500 byte is not even one kilobyte. Of course, it's gonna get slightly bigger, uh, depends on the methods that we generate and the type of functions that we write, but it's just super minified and super easy and super fast to load, which is really, really handy. And also we keep our full structure consistent. We don't enqueue or we don't require source file, assets files that are not coming from the assets folder. And we achieved everything by just simply updating, slightly updating our gofile.js to handle multiple files and not just one, which is really fantastic. So now you can extend it for as many files as you want. Well, it's pretty much it for this lesson. Thank you guys for watching and I talk to you in the next one.